Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast. And right now, we'll be discussing a very sensational story uh, on social media. In, in December 2020, Deborah Achibong released a viral video uh, calling out officials of the Deeper Life High School in Uyo, alleging that they had maltreated her son, starved him, and sexually assaulted him. Now, we even saw pictures of the boy before he resumed school and after, which uh, was basically like a validation of her claims that he had been starved. You know, and now the police is involved. They're investigating uh, school officials over the matter. And we're now being joined by Wale Ogwadi, a legal practitioner, to discuss this. Thank you very much, sir, for being here. Thank you so much. First of all, and Happy New Year. Yes. To you and all, all those who are watching this program all over the world. Happy Same New Year to you, sir. Year to you, sir. good things for us. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, please help us break this down, first of all. What laws, as regards the rights of children, sexual abuse, and homosexuality, has the school, the officials, and, you know, other pupils broken in this matter? Yeah, well, there's this general law, uh, this particular law now, called the Child's Rights Act. It's a law that protects the rights of children. And this law makes provisions for a somebody to be called a child to be anybody under the age of 18. And once you are under the age of 18, you are protected by this special law to protect children, to ensure, because they are counted as adolescents, they don't have, they don't know their right, per se, they don't know anything about life. So they need the, uh, the special protection of the law so that they will not be taken advantage of. And that's why sometimes, of course, a part of that law is the child, the labor law, the uh, uh, prohibition against uh, should the child labor, and all are, of course, you know about tra uh, trafficking, and all such laws are, they are all, uh, um, they all come out from the Child Rights Act. And what it means is that they want to protect, the law wants to protect children from being taken advantage of, as I said earlier on. All right. Um, help us understand, you know, because the story, the developing story says that uh, uh, staff of the school have been arrested um, and the police is uh, saying that they will be arraigned. Um, what can they possibly be charged with? In what ways um, will they be culpable in this situation? Obviously, they will be, there are several things that has happened in that, uh, in that uh, incident that you're talking about. One is, again, maybe I didn't mention it now that you have added asked it. There is a constitutional provision that does in our 1999 constitution that it guarantees one's right to privacy, liberty, and of course, its right to life all from section 33 to 38 of the 1999 constitution. And particularly, your life to your personal liberty as provided for in section 36 of the 1999 constitution. Either you are an adult, or you are, you are, you are a, a, a child, you have that right, it's guaranteed, it's your inalienable right, which must be respected and protected. And that's why even our children at home, we respect them. That's why the fact that yeah, we belong to the African society, that when a child goes wrong or makes any mistakes, he's spanked by his parents. Even generally, when we are young, not only your parents, you know, anybody in the society, that's why we all grew up, that's how I grew up. And of course, I, because I was a little bit on the rascal side, and of course, I, I was spanked by people and my parents. But again, we won't take it too far. Because spanking is different from beating and causing injury to the body or taking advantage of, as we are talking about. And once you won't take advantage of a child or anybody whatsoever, then you will face the music because he has run foul of the law, as guaranteed by the Constitution, that's even if it's adult or that, you call it the grown norm. Or even the Child Rights Act, as it applies to this one now, running foul of section 40 and 45 of uh, 38 and 43 of the 36 of the 1999 Constitution, then as well as the, the, the totality of the Child Rights Act. So the police have the right to charge. And don't forget again that there is abuse, abuse of, your, of, of the person. Yeah, well, uh, let's, again, this, this is why. Yeah, um, this is why I'm asking that. The, the people who have been arrested so far um, from the story aren't necessarily the people who assaulted the boy um, directly. Uh, they are staff of the school uh, that were invited to the police station and eventually you know, have been arrested and will be arraigned. And what, what, what I'm trying to clarify here is what are they culpable of? You know, is it negligence? Is it placing the child in harm's way? Is it not being able to protect the child even when 
uh, they may have also seen that he was being harassed. What exactly would they be, be charged with? Yeah, yeah, yes. In law, that's what we call the uh, criminal uh, participants. That's those who are involved in a crime. Then, of course, we have the accessories after the facts and all. So, I don't want to go too technical. But that one will be sorted out with the law courts. But the principal thing is what you have just stated. Obviously, I mean, I went to a boarding school per se, and I know that when we're in the boarding school, we have housemasters. We have uh, people who take care of us in the, in, the, in the hostel. And, of course, we have class teachers, too. And it will be an aberration that those who are supposed to take care of us are the ones abusing us. Obviously, that will erode elements of trust. People who want to do that in the future will look at it as, where am I taking my child to? The place that my child will be abused, my, the place that my child is not safe. So if such things happen, it is the duty of the police to cure or to call or to correct such anomalies. And that's what they are trying to do. So that people will now know that there is responsibility. And of course, if you fail in your responsibility, then there is punishment. Mm. Those who ought to have been involved in ensuring that the school and the environment is properly managed and they fail in that regard, definitely must face the music. Yeah, Mr. Wale Ogwade, the police has indeed called in some officials for questioning. And we've seen many cases like this where, you know, eventually the family of the victim is uh, persuaded or coerced to drop the charges. How do you think uh, this practice impedes justice for victims? You see, again, that's the African in us. I've handled a situation before like that. A child was raped. An eight-year-old big girl was raped. And eventually, the community and the society and the community and the family, both left and right now, the family of the, of the child that was raped and the, the, the family of the child that raped, all we have put pressure on the father and the mother that they should leave it. Let's make it a family affair. Let's solve this thing, and so on. And of course, you see, the police again cannot enforce such things because to all intents and purposes, if the parties say that they are ready to settle, that's one of the, that's one of the problem of the justice system in this country. But, and of course, don't forget that it's an infraction against the state. That's why when you go to court, you see the commissioner of police or the state pass or something because we have changed it now that it's the state that somebody has made an uh, has made an, uh, hmm. an, that have committed an offense against, not that individual person. And that's why you hear the state versus. So, unfortunately, we, that's one of the things we do. But if we have a very strong person like this, um, uh, uh, the complainant in this case, then definitely we'll go somewhere. And that's why we'll be able to test the law, to know how strong the law is, to, to mm. serve as a deterrent to others. That question you ask has errors encouraged, and that's what maybe I've brought to this. If, if you have your people in Akwa Ibom now, if you go to them, you'll see that there'll be, if they, are, if they do their investigation very well, there'll be some undercover activities in terms of this, this in our court. And they'll start using language. They'll bring history. You see, your father and my auntie and your, and, and your, mm -hmm. and your brother are cousins. They are married and so on. Before you know it, everything will be settled. And who is the victim? The boy. Then and the larger society, the state, because, and, and, and the larger society, because at the end of the day, somebody will look at it that well, I'll do it again. And of course, there will be some elements of persuasion and uh, intervention and I'll go scot free. Yes, I go scot free. But we want to take his course as we normally see. It's absolutely, you know, important that, of course, you know, like you've said, the law takes its, uh, um, it takes a course here. Um, it should be the state against the perpetrators of these crimes. We've seen it happen in in, um, um, gov in Benue State, I believe, with the TV reporter brutalizing his wife, and then the governor eventually came to settle them. It also has happened lately with the Ogun State Commissioner, you know, even if that, that is still an ongoing case. Um, but I, I want you to quickly share with us, you know, what this should do with regards our laws um, um, concerning boarding schools. Um, should this, you know, be enough to create a massive investigation into the safety of kids in boarding schools across Nigeria um, and help parents to maybe start to look deeper into some of these schools that they send their, their kids to? Someone, someone even suggested boarding schools should be shut down for a while and especially, um, until there's a thorough investigation. Yes, and so I get to cheap in there. I think more specifically... When it comes to religious schools, there's this, you know, parents tend to send their kids to religious boarding schools or religious schools yeah. with the hopes that these schools, you know, with the faith, their faith-based institutions, yeah. they will be able to instill discipline in their kids, nurture them it's in not, godly it's, it's character. Not but you case. find out that those kids are eventually abused in such situations. So really, 
Do we need an investigation into that? Yeah. And what more can be done to instill discipline, genuine discipline in you know, these pupils and not just hypocritical discipline because it's a church that owns the school? I don't, this is a multi question. I hope my brain will be able to pick uh, and respond really does, to your it's question. It's really about just about if new policies. Just, just pardon me, or refresh my memory yeah. as we normally say. So let me just yeah, quickly share. Uh, it's new policies. Do we, do we hope that this would create new policies with regards to protecting kids in boarding schools? Should we maybe get to the extent where boarding schools should maybe be shut down across the country until there is a thorough investigation and there are new laws that can protect these kids? And um, she also asked about, you know, religious schools. No, 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 I get you, I get you, I get you. Don't worry, don't worry, I get you. I was just trying to, to pull your legs since there's anything like that. Yeah, on the issue of the uh, continuation of body schools, we will not because of this, that's what, that's a cliche, you can't put the body away with the bad water. We will have a solution to it. The law, you see, that in, in the legal system, we have what we call the, the, the golden rule, and, 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 and the curable rule, so that we can cure issues when they happen. And of course, this one has drawn attention to the fact that there is a lacuna or there is a gap in the system. And of course, it must be corrected because immorality has taken over. We now have people who ought not to be in a sensitive position because it's a very sensitive office for you to be put in trust of the future of the people of our, the future of our next generation. So if people who ought to be in that office and now people of questionable characters, people who have no fear of God, they definitely will not determine that the, the, the recruitment system into such people, those who handle such offices are people who have a fear of God, those who are not ungodly, those who are not given to rabble rousing, who have, who have sold their mind to a reprobate mind. And of course, you agree with me that I, I told you I, mean, I, I, I went to the secondary at a boarding school. And I know that our teachers and our uh, hall masters and our dormitory masters and whatever nomenclature they are called did all they could. They were taking care of us as their children and they ensured that no harm came to us or came to us. But in this situation, we find out that some teachers, in fact, they will leave the children. You see the student after office, uh, office during after school hours, they now be roaming about, even in their house uniform. And you ask them where I am in the boarding house because sometimes I run around my interior and I still do see one or two of them. And I know what's happening. And of course, maybe God wants it now to be given that good attention. That's why this incident has happened. And he has given that like I'm Deborah or whatever her name is to now be able to be bold, to now say, no, I want justice for my son. And it, of course, as we are with, uh, running this program now, the legislators are watching, uh, uh, government officials are watching. So we know that everybody, because all of us are parents and we want our children to be safe. So we ensure that we create a safe environment for our children. There is no, there is no uh, discussion. There is no uh, uh, question about that. The issue is that it must be solved. And once that is solved, then we move the next to the next level. How do we now arrest all those situations so that it doesn't come in? That's why we will now work on the legislators, legislators to ensure that they quickly pass laws. Then we will not look at the recruiting system in the, in the educational system, particularly in the boarding schools, and even all those who own source institutions. Now we now stretch it to the teaching, to the classroom itself. Who are the type of teachers? Because we've been having, having stories of teachers molesting their children, not even boarding house students now, but even main teachers in the day school or even in the classroom. We have stories. Then because you know that because of the situation on ground now, many people who ought not to be in the education system are now there. Yeah. I won't disappoint, I will disappoint you. Right. One young man came, I, I, I spoke with a young man right. two days ago. Thank he you very much. Education. Uh, and I asked, are you interested? He said no. Mr. Ogunade, thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, we've uh, run out of time uh, for this conversation, but it's important that uh, the discussion never stops, you know, and it, we continue to talk about these things until we have a society and an education system that is safe for kids across the country. Thank you very much for your time once again. Thank Good you. Good morning to you. To God be the glory. Um, you know, these things should never, never, never stop. And I was very, very um, serious when I said, I think this should create a conversation about new laws, new policies that protect kids in schools. Um, I can imagine that this kid at some point maybe has complained to I didn't, go, I didn't go to boarding school. My kids will never go to boarding school. But I'm sure that at some point he may have complained to whoever is in charge of the kids there and he probably was ignored. 
Yes. Um, that person should go to jail. I think Whoever so too. else you know, is found culpable should go to jail. Every single person. I would even like the principal to also be, be held you know, responsible for Indeed, all of this people mess. need to be held accountable. But the, the good thing is that Mrs. Achibong here was vocal about this. She didn't keep, she didn't keep quiet. You know, there's a culture of silence. Of people, you know, people are always ashamed, so to speak. Remember when she released these videos alleging that the school had abused her son? Lots of people in the comment section session online would say that uh, the mother should have kept quiet. Why is she exposing her son? You know, trauma for the child and all of that. So I think people should be encouraged to speak up. Absolutely. If you're a victim of you know abuse, you should speak up so that you know law can and justice can take place. No good mother will stay silent at a time like that. Anyway, uh, now still talking. Well, maybe not harassment this time, but, but we're still moving. Scandals. <laughs> <laughs> still talking scandals. I think that's the right way mm -hmm. to put it. We're moving into a different conversation next with uh, regards a certain bank, two kids, a late husband, and a wife. And uh, of course, we'll be back in a short well, after this break. Good morning. Stay with us.